Elon Musk's Neuralink has officially been beaten to the punch in developing and releasing a product which would allow for paralyzed people to move again. BlackRock Neurotech, a firm that makes brain-computer interfaces, has announced that their Move Again BCI has been designated as a breakthrough device by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Move Again is a technology that allows people to operate a mobile device or tablet, a mouse cursor, a keyboard wheelchair, or a prosthetic device with their thoughts. The technology is expected to be commercialized in 2022, according to BlackRock. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you BlackRock's new implantable brain-computer interface, in which ways it differs from Neuralink, and what the near future for the BCI industry could look like. The Move Again BCI consists of a brain-implanted array that decodes movement from neural activity. Signals are then wirelessly transferred to an external device, such as a cursor or wheelchair, giving users control over their surroundings. In a statement, BlackRock Neurotech co-founder and CEO Marcus Gerhardt stated, We look forward to working together with the FDA to prioritize development of the Move Again brain-computer interface system, which will move us closer to our goal of commercialization in 2022. Patients with tetraplegia are eager to get access, and we're devoted to expanding their potential to gain independence through our BCI technology. Florian Solzbacher, BlackRock Neurotech's chair and president, stated that the business thinks it has adequate safety and effectiveness evidence to enable the initial applications. Meanwhile, as the business works on a wireless version, large-scale integration technologies have allowed for even further downsizing. BlackRock Neurotech, according to Solzbacher, expects to submit plans to make the items publicly accessible in 2022. They are witnessing the start of a revolution in the diagnosis and treatment of neurological illnesses and impairments. Neural implants might be as prevalent as cardiac pacemakers 10 years from now, providing patients with a whole new universe of alternatives that restore their freedom. This is the culmination of over a decade of work to reduce the size of all components while simultaneously improving computing and processing capability. The inherent scalability of computers and electronics has aided some of this, a smartphone today has more processor power than a desktop 10 years ago. Their internal development efforts in developing novel custom mixed signal computer chips with ultra-low power and size for high-channel neural signal processing, novel packaging and system integration approaches, and, as needed, smaller and more robust electrodes have contributed significantly to this. As a result of these advancements, they are now able to make everything tiny and sturdy enough to go from inhuman demonstrations to product offerings. A baby aspirin-sized implant monitors signals linked with desired motions made in the brain's motor cortex in the exploratory brain-computer interface. After that, the signals are decoded and sent to other devices. Despite having lost motor functions due to sickness or accident, the researchers and other organizations employing comparable technology have demonstrated that the device can allow persons with paralysis to manipulate robotic arms or restore control of their own limbs. The patients in this current trial were people with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis (ALS) and spinal cord injuries who had lost mobility in their arms and legs. The brain-computer interface's neural impulses were attached to a Bluetooth interface that was set up to act like a wireless mouse for this investigation. The virtual mouse was then connected to a Google Nexus 9 tablet that had not been updated. The participants were then asked to complete a series of exercises designed to assess their ability to navigate within and across a range of regularly used apps. The participants used a streaming service to listen to music, look for videos on YouTube, navigate through a news aggregator, and create emails and conversations. Henderson compared the enhanced neural sensing resolution to handing out applause meters to individual members of a studio audience rather than merely stationing them on the ceiling, so you can determine precisely how hard and how fast each person in the audience is applauding. Shinoy anticipated that a self-calibrating, completely implanted wireless device will be available in 5 to 10 years that can be used without caregiver help, has no aesthetic effect, and can be used around the clock. While utilizing a range of applications, participants were able to make up to 22 point-and-click decisions each minute, according to the research. Using normal email and text interfaces, participants were able to type up to 30 effective characters per minute in text apps. It seemed more natural than the times I recall using a mouse, one participant stated, 
describing the interface as easy and enjoyable to use. It was great to see our participants make their way through the tasks we asked them to perform, says lead author Dr. Paul Nuyujukian, but the most gratifying and fun part of the study was when they just did what they wanted to do, using the apps they liked for shopping, watching videos, or just chatting with friends. Because this was a crucial component of the study, the researchers were pleased that the tablet devices were completely untouched and had all pre-installed accessibility software turned off. The research has the potential to open up vital new avenues of communication between individuals with severe neurological impairments and their medical practitioners. Dr. Lee Hochberg of Brown University, Massachusetts General Hospital, and the Providence VA Medical Center in the United States discusses the brain-computer interface's rehabilitative qualities for persons with paralysis and neurodegenerative disorders. We're coming closer to being able to tell someone who has been diagnosed with ALS. You will never lose your capacity to communicate, even as we continue to look for a solution. This effort is a step in the right direction. Brain-computer interfaces may appear futuristic, yet their use is on the rise. These systems allow impulses from the brain to be recorded or utilized to operate technology. Much of the research and development effort on BCIs is centered on medical applications, but consumer applications are already being investigated, ranging from improving gaming to allowing your boss to check your work rate. BCIs have attracted enough interest to be included in Gartner's hype cycle, which determines which new technologies are delivering on their promises and which are not. BCIs are at the top of overblown expectations, according to last year's hype cycle for developing technology. It's somewhat unsurprising that the hype is outpacing reality, particularly when it comes to consumer technology use. For the time being, the most capable and fascinating applications of brain-computer interfaces may be found in research laboratories. Many are intended to assist individuals with disabilities and medical problems regain talents they've lost, while others, such as gaming with a BCI controller or piloting a drone using just thinking, are intended to demonstrate how the technology may be used by customers in the future. BCIs have the potential to revolutionize how we interact with our electronics in a variety of ways. BCIs are a significant bet for Facebook and others. In a deal worth up to $1 billion, it just purchased Control Labs, a brain-computer interface business. Control Labs sells wrist-worn gear that uses electromyography EMG, to take up nerve impulses from the skin and converts them into movement signals that may be used to control digital devices. Instead of opening or closing a program window with a mouse click, systems like Control Labs will let users to do it with a tiny motion. The desire to find new ways to control electronics in recent years, the emergence of virtual reality games, as well as augmented reality devices such as Google Glass, has been mirrored. These new technologies have emphasized the need for less obtrusive interfaces that require less physical input in order for a user to take action. VR, in particular, forces users to play with clumsy controls, which detracts from the quasi-reality that such systems are attempting to achieve. Control Labs provided a developer kit and demos illustrating how its BCI system may be utilized in gaming before being bought by Facebook. It's unclear whether Control Labs will expand its gaming division after the acquisition, Facebook already owns VR kit maker Oculus Rift, but others with an interest in BCIs are already demonstrating how they may be utilized in gaming. They expect to release our first commercial product this year, followed by further functionality, capabilities, and use cases in the following years. Their first objective is to help patients who have been waiting years for such a solution have access as quickly as possible, and then to gradually expand their patient base to include a wider range of individuals. Given the overall dynamic and efforts in our space, I wouldn't be surprised if, in 10 to 15 years, these types of implants become as common as other implants like cardiac pacemakers, cochlea implants, and others, vastly expanding new options for patients suffering from neurological and possibly even psychological disorders, as well as those who have experienced limb loss, disarticulations due to accidents or disease. So, what is your opinion on BlackRock's claims that they developed a BCI that could cure paralysis? Do you think that this really old BCI company really has a chance against the well-funded and highly staffed Neuralink? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. 
We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.